Yeah, I'm walking by <laughs> sushi place in Canada music. <laughs> Welcome back to the to the uh understand the youtube channel and the east seller cafe news roundup uh, i'm your host dave Furness, and as always i'm joined by mr richard meldner richard and you are once again in an airport i'm once again in an airport not we're not supposed to be in an airport at this time but once again i'm in an airport <laughs> and I'm, I'm even in an airport i wasn't supposed to be at today at all <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is just, it's, I think Richard should set up a YouTube channel called uh, airportreviews.com. Yeah. Review all the different airports that you seem to frequent on a on a weekly basis. Yeah, it used to be a little crazy. Yeah, I was supposed to go uh, nonstop from Raleigh, Durham to Miami, and uh, well, I'm now in Charlotte. <laughs> oh, dear. Could be worse. Could be in Houston. Um, yeah, it could be worse. That's true. So anyway, I don't think any to, sorry, go on, Richard. Yes. That's okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so on to the main subjects of the day. Of course, as you know, the Excel Cafe News Roundup is where we bring you the latest e-commerce news that's going on around the world, whether it be from eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Etsy, whoever it may be. We keep you up to date with the latest goings on and give you a bit of a roundup of all that information. So with that said, food has been a big story this past week and is most likely going to continue to be a big story this week coming as well. Uh, the Amazon Whole, Field, Whole Foods deal was approved by the FTC and Amazon came out and said that they're going to close the deal today on Monday and that we can expect lower prices at Whole Foods immediately. Now, that's, again, some pretty balls out statements coming from Amazon there that they're going to just slash prices in, in the Whole Foods marketplace. Uh, what's our take on that, Richard? Yeah, that's uh, that, that's what the, the statement was. Since there's a Whole Foods by my house, uh, if I ever get home, I might actually go over there and see if they slash prices or not, <laughs> especially since i got to go buy some strawberries and other things like that. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, they also the other part of it is that they're going to do something for Prime members. Mm -hmm. Are they going to? Uh, supposedly roll out, and I assume that's not going to be starting today, but roll out some kind of benefit program for Prime members uh, yep. when it comes to food. So there's there's a bunch of stuff in the works. Um, and of course, the big one that everyone's going to wait on is how is it all going to integrate with either Amazon Fresh or uh, whatever other delivery concept or scheme they're going to bring. Uh, so. Yeah, it is a very be curious one, for sure, because when we... Um, a few people have asked me about this over the weekend. It's like, you know, how can Amazon slash prices at Whole Foods so quickly? And I was like, well, it's what they do. That Amazon play the long game in everything that they do. So they'll cut prices immediately to sort of peak buyer interest and get them on board and get them used to using Whole Foods again if they haven't been already. Uh, so the incentivization piece works very well. And then, like you said, they're going to start tying them into some sort of prime subscription, some prime benefits that there are there. And also, they'll just work so hard on efficiency, which is what Amazon is so good at. The logistics, the efficiency, they will, you know, cut down costs and ultimately increase, um, you know, profits. So they can afford right now to to take a hit initially in order to make this big plan come together. Correct, and and, and the one thing is, it does sound like that the initial or, or that the uh, that the items they're reducing the price on is predominantly going to be the staples, like you know eggs yeah. and fruits and things like. That. They're not, you know, not the. Um, oh look at this! This place has a bar right next to the gate. That's pretty cool. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's been distracted. <laughs> Distracted. Never seen a bar right next to a gate. I mean, literally, there's the gate agency and right next to the bar. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, so I'm sorry to get off topic there, but yeah, the the bottom line is when it comes to um, um they're not going to do anything like you know with the specialty cheeses and any of these type of smaller producers. That's mm -hmm. unlikely because the you know the margins in yeah, there. Yeah, so small. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's going to be a little different. So we'll, we'll have to see. But yeah, mostly it's going to be the staples and. Uh, like I said, I might uh, may not get to it today, but I'll I'll try to check it out tomorrow. My whole food's around the corner. Hmm. Interesting. So, like I said, that's the news which, like I said, should be that sort of like breaking news or current news in in what should be happening today. Um, 
obviously, as that unfolds, we'll get some more stories out on uh, eSell Cafe this week with any uh, interesting bits that you, we think that you need to know about. So on to the main, uh, the, the first story that we've got today, and that's that Amazon launches grocery delivery to Amazon business customers. So this is a curious one. Obviously, Amazon launched Amazon Business, which is, again, for business users, and they've now launched Amazon Grocery specifically for business customers. What's all this about? Well, they are trying to tie into um, and trying to get some more of the market for Staples and Office Depot here in the United States, which are, uh, or Quill, which are all the uh, office supply houses. And, and one of the things that, um, you know, every office has is, well, not every, but a lot of offices have our, you know, little lunch areas and things like that, you know, snack coffees and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So they add that um, part of it to that business and going to, um, you know, it, it, I, I see it kind of as an integration of trying to say, well, Walmart was doing these things, so we're going to do this. You know, it's, it's a pretty easy integration, and um, it just kind of, you know, gives them, you know, supposedly another million customers. Um, mm, wow. Although for the most part, you know, most of those people are probably already prime customers that, as is, and and you have to be a prime, um, personal prime membership in order to use it. So it's it's all tied in at the end of the day into a personal prime. Um, it's just a... You know, just a branding exercise, really, for, for the most part, just to say we have this available now as well. You know. Yeah, so again, it's another, you know, sort of, we also do this, another also product that Amazon do. So uh, just quickly scrolling down, uh, currently Amazon Fresh uh, business is available in Seattle, New York, Philadelphia, Stanford, Trenton, Boston, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, Dallas, Chicago, Miami, Denver, Los Angeles, Riverside, San Diego, San Francisco, Sacramento, San Jose, and Stockton. So uh, pretty much New York, uh, California, Florida, yeah. yep, a little bit more on the East Coast, Boston, and then Seattle. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, again, they, they've obviously gone after the – where the population is, where the, you know, the, the biggest density of uh, businesses and, and people. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And also, that's well, yeah, that, that's exactly what they did. And, and, you know, cheap marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, the, the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. They're, not, they're not changing any, they're not adding any logistics or warehouses or anything. No. They just said, we have here a new, a new service that really runs on top of an existing service. Exactly. So, so doing more with the same. Well done, Amazon. I'm a big fan of that. Um, next up, we've got Walmart expands grocery delivery with Uber to Dallas and Orlando. Now, this is something which um, I'm surprised more people haven't done this here in the UK yet, because that was, although saying that, we now have Uber Eats here in Manchester who just specifically do um, like takeaway deliveries and food deliveries. But with regarding like Tesco deliveries or like supermarket deliveries, why weren't people using the likes of Uber already? The the, the framework, log the logistics were already there. Um, and it looks like that's what Walmart is has been doing and now it's expanding it into Dallas and Orlando um, along with the existing trials that were going on in Tampa and Phoenix. Yeah, what's interesting about these is they're, they're very um, small trials. They're mm. a total of 20 or 30 stores if you add all uh, uh, four markets together. Um, and, and that's kind of interesting, you know, why it is that small, because Uber obviously can be scaled relatively quickly. I, I don't know um, if, you know, Walmart is a little bit all over the board when it comes to delivery. And in some areas, they're testing some delivery with their own associates. In other areas, they're using, I think, even their own trucks, you know. Um, so there's a little bit of a, a shotgun approach here. Um, I, you know, and, and actually, I think the, I, I went back to the original story, which uh, which came out in 2016 for the first two cities. You know, they actually at that time said, I think that the uh, lift was included as well as deliver. So, um, mm -hmm. so I have the feeling they might have maybe just made a decision. Okay, we're going to go with uh, Uber now, and and then uh, let's give that another try and see if it really can work. And then, and and so then, um, you know give that a shot and see what happens after that. And um, in, it, it, it seems to make sense to try, you know, and like you said, yeah. the, the systems are in place effectively when it comes to, you know, how to deal with eats because it's obviously run differently than, than people, you know, so you have to have some kind of different scheme in place for that. Um, um, I, I think, I think we're going to see Uber get into the delivery business across the country in many, in many different ways. I think it's just the beginning. And uh, 
and and Walmart may not be the only one. You know. May not even be the one that uh, the Walmart may not go with Uber in the long run, but there might be others that will jump on board with this. You know. Yeah, very true, very true. And I do apologize to anyone watching. It does appear that the Charlotte Airport staff have no respect for the world's leading weekly e commerce news show. No, none. I had to actually Rude. walk away from, from the. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to send a very strongly worded tweet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I do apologies for that. Obviously, Richard is traveling, so we we have to uh, uh, get away with what we can on this one. Um, next up, we've got Walmart offers voice shopping on Google Home. That's that's probably really the biggest news. Uh, one of the biggest news. That is news big about. news. Yeah. It's, it effectively says you know Walmart and Google are now teamed up to say we're going to do what Amazon was doing with uh, um, Amazon um, uh, with the Echo products or you know with Alexa. And Google also supposedly is going to come out with a, um, um, this is rumored by I think Android police are going to come out with a smaller version of the uh, Google Home, which pretty much everybody's been knew was going to happen at some point or another, you know. Um, I so didn't even think it was that big to begin with. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a cheaper, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, it, you know, it boils down to a price point play now, you know. They, um you know, Google was you know always very good with the with the, with the little dongle thing, the the, the streaming stick, yeah. and um, Chromecast was it called? Was, yeah, thirty bucks or so. I'm sure that's what this new um, Google Home thing is going to be, right down in the thirties. And uh, what is makes this integration interesting is the first time that Google Express, which is sort of shopping integration mm -hmm. of Google, will get actual access to Walmart. Uh, uh, data, you know, uh, customer data, so they can make a recommendation. So it's a true integration, not just a uh, shopping card type of integration. But yeah, that is a deep relationship there, isn't it? it just says that Google gains access to Walmart order histories and customer data. So yes, exactly. So there, there's a very deep relationship there. Now, obviously, some people say, "Wait a second, I'm going to give all my information to Walmart and Google." I mean, <laughs> you know, now that you're going to share stuff amongst each other, you know, the Google, both companies will know more about each other, you know, about mm. each other users in some weird way but yeah because yeah. again just reading the article here the integration allows google to make purchase recommendations for example a customer may ask google buy bread and google will suggest to the customer the brand of bread it thinks the customer likes the most and perhaps has bought previously so very so, yeah, interesting yes yeah, so it's um um you know obviously it it it, it has it's just going to roll out here in the next couple of months, I believe it was, and uh, um, but it's it's going to make uh, it's definitely going to, another one of these things where Walmart is taking a huge run at, at Amazon. You know? Absolutely, and and this is one of the things which again months and months ago I said that you you don't bet against Google, and and when it came to the smart speakers, Amazon was in the lead, obviously due to uh, first market, but Amazon are going to be reluctant as they've been you know throughout history to get too close to other people they like to own the relationship they like to be in charge of all the different moving parts the thing is with the google they're quite happy to have integrations with other you know non-competing businesses and um the, you know we've spoke about ebay and google getting back you know friends again and, and now walmart and google um it just means to me that the, the google assistant and the google home products Maybe the offer. more may end up being the more versatile, versatile of all of them at the end of the day. Exactly, and that's the thing you don't bet against Google because they have, you know, the technology, the ability to to make things easier. Like again, just reading more from the article here, and for anyone watching this right now or, or watching the recording, all the links to the articles that we're talking about are in the description down below. Um, but it says, uh, let me find it. There's more in the pipeline. This is just the beginning. Next year, we will also leverage our 4,700 US stores and our fulfillment network to create customer experiences that don't currently exist within voice shopping, including choosing to pick up an order in store, often for a discount, or using voice shopping to purchase fresh groceries across the country. So again, very interesting innovation, and again, further development of that voice that experience, the voice, voice commerce, v-commerce, if that's gonna become a thing. Um, yeah, I sure it will. New, new, new yeah, exactly. We need to add that one to the glossary. Um, but yeah, so very interesting to see how that develops. Um, yeah, I, I think that's exciting times coming from Google on that one. 
next up, we've got Amazon Top Up comes to the UK. Now, this is a follow on. Can I interrupt you for one? Is there another course. one? I think we're getting close to boarding here. Is there another one that involves me more because I'm probably going to have to jump again. Okay, no worries, mate. Let's see what else we've got on here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, how about Etsy? Etsy sellers, uh, Etsy invites yeah. sellers to form Q&A to discuss new search filters. Well, it looks like the uh, on, on, on Etsy they have um, they have listened to to uh, sellers or feedbacks and and made some changes and also put some stuff uh, permanently in place. And then uh, in an odd way for a tech company, they said, "Well, we're going to have a day of forums where we're going to uh, on a forum where we're going to answer questions." Oh, it's like, wow. why not? You know, why not? Well, but why not do a webinar? That's the part I didn't understand. It was yeah, make weird. it. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean that's what how everybody else does webinars. Not even we do <laughs> webinars. <laughs> Absolutely, but we are so, the leading I mean, forefront of technology here at Esal Cafe. Yeah, that, that that's true. So, um, <laughs> um, so the 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 oddity with that was just the kind of the rollout was seemed a little chintzy, um, but uh, but as far as the um, the gist of it, what they're trying to that they're trying to accomplish, um, that was definitely um, the uh, the right thing, and so um, that's good to see. You know, good to see that they're doing that. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And with that, I'm going to have to go because we are literally starting to board. <laughs> no worries, Richard. Have a safe flight. Thank you for joining us, uh, albeit for a little brief time. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you get home soon. And we'll thank catch you. Richard next week. Again, thank you next so week. much for joining us, Richard. All right, take care. Have a bye-bye. See you next week. See you next week. So uh, you're stuck with me for the last few news pieces here. So I will, yes, yeah, so that's Etsy done. And... Yes, so let's talk about Amazon Top Up coming to the UK. Now, Amazon Top Up is basically the UK version of uh, Amazon Cash, which was launched in the USA back in April. And it's quite an interesting concept because whilst I firmly believe that we are moving more and more towards a cashless society, um, you know, cards and, you know, contactless, Apple Pay, Android Pay are taking up so much of the market share. There's still a huge amount of people who are either what they call unbanked, as in they actually just don't have a bank account, or underbanked in as terms of, uh, that you know, they're not allowed credit cards and maybe in overdrafts and stuff like that. Um, so, where, so where cash is obviously much more... Uh, easy obviously for, for these people to use. So Amazon Top Up is a system where you can set up an Amazon account and request your barcode, your top up barcode, and then you can either print it out or keep it on your phone. And then you go to a pay point um, station. There's loads of them around the place. Some uh, convenience stores tend to have them, probably post offices as well. Across the UK, you can go to the pay point website and find your nearest one. And then what you can do is you can actually give the cashier cash and he will then scan the barcode, insert the amount, and then your that amount of cash will get debited into your Amazon account in, as uh, like gift cards. So you can then purchase whatever it is you want through Amazon using the cash that you've just debited onto the account. Again, not this is exactly the same as what's been going on in America now. Um, few things to bear in mind. It is it's not a banking system in terms of it's a one-way only street. Any money that you put onto your Amazon account, you cannot then request back out as cash. You can't, the reverse doesn't work. It's a one-way system. Um, it is 100% free to use. You know, there's no uh, restrictions or no fees put in place for doing this. Um, and you cannot purchase gift cards using the amount that you put into your account. So again, it's one of those, I don't think it's going to attract or affect a lot of people, but again, it's just further um, innovation from Amazon, reaching, uh, again, that little bit more people who uh, and offering them uh, something that they can then get involved with the Amazon experience. Uh, eBay, to launch questions and answers on the UK eBay site, from October. Now, uh, once again, from October 2017, this is again what you might call the further Amazonification of eBay. We all know that Amazon have had questions and answers on their site for a long time now. eBay are now uh, bringing them onto their new static product pages. It makes perfect sense that the questions and answers are a great thing as long as they do not get abused. And I'm sure eBay will have multiple. Uh, 
checks in place to make sure that that isn't the case. Um, and yeah, it, it will work by all intents and purposes, exactly the same as it does on Amazon. People can ask questions and people who've bought the products or the sell themselves can answer them. And again, it just adds more and more to that social proof in that, yes, this product is for me or it isn't for me. And again, it, it should aid in conversion. So again, expect that to come into play in October 2017. I believe it. the beta has been rolling out, so you may start seeing it earlier, but it will be open to everyone from October onwards. Uh, next up, shopping apps are among the most deleted on smartphones. Now, this to me doesn't come as a surprise. You know, back seven or eight years ago, there was that big dilemma where people didn't know, was it going to go, was e-commerce as a whole going to go web app or was it going to go mobile website? Um, and I would say that whilst some of the big guys, so the likes of eBay, Amazon, John Lewis, um, Walmart, you know, these big, big uh, stores have had the luxury to do both. And I would say, though, that for the majority, the SMEs, mobile website has won by a long way. And you think about, you know, apps on the phone. There has to be a need or a desire to have them there for a long period of time. Any app that you have on your phone, especially on your home screen, is usually going to be something that you use daily or if not multiple times a week. The reality is with shopping apps, that's not always going to be the case. You know, you don't need to go shopping every single day. And what is actually happening is that app is taking up in some cases, valuable storage space on your phone. So it's one of the first ones that gets to chop when you get that more space needed on your phone message pop up. So it doesn't surprise me that shopping apps are among the most deleted. I think it's to be expected. The way around that is mobile websites. Push mobile websites more than apps. Sure enough, if you're, if you're a big guy, uh, like eBay and Amazon, and you have the you know the allocation of the financial allocation in order to justify a web app fair enough but i think mobile optimized websites are always going to be the main one like for me i mean i did have the ebay app for a time i deleted it because well for a few reasons i felt it was buggy uh, and i felt the mobile uh, website worked a lot better same with amazon i don't have the amazon app um, and I know there's different, you know, benefits of having the app, but I've, I've got by so far without them. Um, so again, it's not surprising if you were ever curious about whether you go down the app route or the mobile website route, I would always say do mobile website first, uh, and, and worry about the app at a later date to give you, is there any statistics here? Uh, around 43% of people delete unused apps that they have paid for. 63% say that they do still keep the apps they don't use. Um, and this was, uh, again, a, a study done by Alligator Tech. Um, again, link is in the description if you want to find out more about that one. Um, next up, so one second, where are we up to here? We covered Etsy. Uh, this is an interesting one. Google Chrome browser security change prompts action by eBay. Now, this is an important one and, and so important that I actually did a dedicated video about this uh, over on my YouTube channel, which is The Man Entrepreneur for anyone who's, who's, who's interested. And I talked about the eBay updates that were coming, including the links policy and now this. So Google came out this week and said, uh, in fact, they, they sent an email out, and I'll read it to you. It says, to the owner of domainname.com, uh, starting October 2017, Chrome version 62 will show a not secure warning when users enter text in a form on a HTTP page and for all HTTP pages in incognito mode. The following URLs on your site include text input fields such as input text, input type text or input type email, that will trigger this new Chrome warning. Review these examples, see where these warnings will appear so you could take action to help protect users' data. This list is not exhaustive. So 
that's well and good. Google have brought this out. You know, you know, they're trying to push more websites towards the SSL, HTTPS, the little green bar or the the, the green padlock in the top left hand corner of the address bar. That basically means HTTPS and that the website is encrypted and, and super secure. So if you are using a website to pay anyone or to check out on, you really want to make sure that that SSL thing is there. And nowadays, it very often is. Now, eBay have come out and responded to this. And, and I want to say massive well done, massive hat tip to eBay because they came out super quickly on this one. And this is something which previously eBay may have been slaughtered for in terms of the communication not being good enough, especially when it's on something which isn't their own doing. Um, obviously, this is a Google update. Um, and eBay have actually come out and said uh, that's... Uh, starting in October, since Google Chrome, the browser used by almost half of all eBay buyers will begin displaying the not secure message uh, if a visitor uh, visits a HTTP page. Uh, eBay believes that the not secure message may deter shoppers from buying and impact your conversion rate. eBay is taking steps to make sure that your buyers won't see this message and can access your listing securely. Absolutely. You know, you could think if you were going to hit to a, if you're on a listing page and you see not secure, you're going to bounce away very quickly. I know I would, uh, and I have in the past. So eBay, bang on here, it may affect conversion rate. It will affect conversion rate. And that is why eBay are taking this very, very seriously. You have to remember this is October 2017. This is two months away. And that's prime Christmas build up time. This is terrible timing for eBay right now. Um, but what they've actually said is uh, to prevent the uh, not secure message from deterring buyers. Um, if your listings contain HTTP content and your buyer is on a desktop, buyers will see a snippet of the description and then a link to click the full description. If you want your listings to show the complete description, you need to remove any HTTP content from your listings. Um, and then they've also said that you can use the iWays tool uh, in order to identify if any HTTP um, content is on your listings. Now, they've also come out and said that uh, by August 28th, so today, uh, eBay are going to email sellers that have HTTP content in their listings. So if you do not get an email from eBay, no action is needed. eBay are technically going to do the hard work for you and check to see if any of your listings have HTTP content. And if they do, they're going to email you directly, tell you which listings these are, so you can then take action and make sure you don't get that not secure message popping up on your listings. So again, that is this is an important one. And like I said, that's why I made a dedicated video for it over on my uh, own channel last week. And it's, I want to give people the heads up early because today is the day eBay are going to email you. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely one to not ignore. If you do get that email from eBay t talking to you about HTTP content, don't ignore it. Take action now whilst you're going to be less busy than you are in October and make sure your listings are all fully HTTPS up. And, uh, yeah, you should be in a much better position. Uh, next up, what have we got? Urban area drone delivery is now a reality. So we've we've covered the topic of drone delivery on uh, on Eastside Cafe's news roundups before. We've shown you how um, Amazon patented the sort of beehive, the, 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 where you know multiple drones could fly into these little windows in like a big skyscraper style building. Um, so I mean that's great for if you live in city centres. However. Um, when it comes to the more urban areas, there's obviously going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, so let's take a look. The Icelandic Transport Authority has approved a project to pick up orders from retailers and restaurants on one side of Reykjavik and fly them to designated drop-off points across the bay in Grafavogur. Um, so, yeah, that's... I, I mean, this is something that's come straight out of Iceland, obviously where... Urban deliveries, you know, if you live outside of Reykjavik in Iceland, there's probably not a great deal of infrastructure for deliveries outside of the, the man in the van. Um, so, like I said, uh, 
AHA, which is one of Iceland's largest e-commerce companies, has partnered with Flytrex, which is an Israeli-based drone delivery operator. Uh, and it's going to start offering these drones uh, to, to people, to the people of Iceland. Now, obviously, this is a very small test area. Obviously, Reykjavik is not a huge country, not a huge population in Iceland. But it does, you know, if this uh, pilot is successful, then this it could be rolled out globally. You know, there's I know there's pe plenty of people in the UK who live, you know, at least 40 minutes away from a major city and obviously more than likely a major fulfillment center. So this sort of uh, drone delivery system accessing urban areas is something which I think is a question which is going to need to be answered. It's interesting to see that this uh, this pilot uh, test program running in Iceland is a uh, is going to be an interesting way of doing it. Apparently, they're going to use GPS coordinates in order to obviously fly the drones and, and make sure the uh, deliveries get made on time and, and to the right place. So it's curious, very, very curious. Obviously, there are going to be some regulation, you know, hurdles that they're going to have to get over. Um, but so far, like I said, it sounds like the pilot is going to go ahead. And like I said, I'm sure the rest of the world be, will be watching quite closely to see how they handle this. Uh, and finally, the e-commerce show North is coming to Manchester, UK, where I'm based in, where I am right now, um, in October this year. Now, e-commerce show North is uh, the first; it's the first of its kind, the first conference under that name. Um, here in the UK, we obviously have a few different uh, e-commerce dedicated events. We uh, again. Over on, uh, again, I did a roundup of the Catalyst event, the Channel Advisor Catalyst event, which this year came to Manchester. Um, I also went to Internet Retail in Expo, which was in Birmingham. Uh, I have been to e-commerce Expo. Uh, they did do one in Manchester a few years ago, which wasn't very good. And then there was one in Olympia a few years ago, which was kind of good, but mainly because uh, myself and Matt uh, used it as the opportunity to network with eBay. Uh, on a bit more of a closer friendly level which turned out to be a very good move but the actual event itself was a little bit dry a little bit bland a lot of sales pitches not a lot of value now i uh, i've been speaking with uh chat con martin who's behind e-commerce show north um and you know we've we've had meetings and and i've tried to you know no martin's a fantastic guy and he's been truly he's always known what the idea was for this event i've just tried to sort of tailor it to sort of feed him my advice my thoughts on why previous events here have haven't really been done too well and and how we could fix that and i i truly believe that um the e-commerce show north event in manchester on the 11th and 12th of october will be a really good event for a few different reasons um the first one is that right now Manchester is sort of the e-commerce capital of the UK. We have so many uh, e-commerce businesses here, loads of startups. Um, the tech industry as well is is booming quite highly. So there's going to be a lot of, it's going to attract a lot of great people, a lot of innovative people, a lot of entrepreneurs who are doing the same things. Uh, and getting all of those under one roof is always going to be a good thing. It's a fantastic networking opportunity and the ability to actually ask people face to face how they do certain things, how they've worked around many, some sort of problems, couriers are they using, what software are they using? Uh, and, and just being able to have those conversations is an extremely powerful uh, thing when you have their undivided attention. And this is by no means a small conference. So this is actually gonna be the largest e-commerce event outside of London. Uh, and, you know, this is the first one, and for, for many first conferences, you'd expect them to be small and then work their way up after they've gauged sort of, you know, popularity. Not the case. Martin's gone big on this one, uh, as of the rest of the team at e-commerce show North. They're actually taking over Event City, which is a huge sort of uh, conference expo um, space just out uh, pretty much next to the Trafford Centre. If anyone knows Manchester, it's right next to the Trafford Centre. And uh, there's going to be over 120 exhibitors and up to oh, sorry, over 4,000 attendees. They've also got a great list of speakers lined up as well. 
I think it's going to be a fantastic event. I'm really looking forward to it. I will be there. I will be doing some recording as well for eSeller Cafe. So again, I will. there will be a video. There will be an article to go along with it. However, if you are going to the event, let, let us know underneath. Um, like I said, the link to the article is in the description underneath this video. Click the link. Let us know in the comments section. And if you're interested, we can arrange a meetup with uh, myself. Matt will probably be there too. I know Richard is hoping, and he's certainly looking at flights to see if he can get over for the event. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a big ask. He's based in Florida, uh, but we will see. Obviously, it would be great to get the whole team together, uh, and, and maybe we can do some uh, e-sell cafe type things whilst we're there if uh, if that all comes to plan. If not, like I said, I will definitely be there because it's about a 15-minute drive from where I am right now, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. I do think this this will most likely be looking at the time in the last e-commerce event of the year uh, and certainly the last e-commerce event of the year that you would like to go to bearing in mind the time it, i think it's like the latest that you could get without then encroaching on uh, dangerous times with uh, with the seasonality of of the big christmas and cyber cyber monday black friday creeping up so e-commerce show north is i suspect going to be a fantastic event i'm really looking forward to it and like i said i hope to see you there as well and with that said that is the entire news roundup for this week so again i'll do a quick recap we are expecting uh some big news from amazon and whole foods probably today maybe tomorrow regarding that acquisition uh the ftc have approved it and apparently all the paperwork and deal is going through today and then amazon have come out and said expect to see lower prices at whole foods immediately we know richard is going to be keeping an eye out his local one uh, so that's uh, that's what we can expect to see breaking news on this week. Uh, Amazon is going to be launching grocery delivery to Amazon business customers. We talked about that. Walmart expands grocery delivery with Uber to Dallas and Orlando. Uh, Walmart offers voice shopping on Google Home. Again, very exciting times for Google Home there. I do think Google is going to be the one to watch in the uh, smart speaker arena for sure. I've been saying that for months now. I just truly hope it comes true. <laughs> um, Amazon Top Up comes to the UK. It's basically Amazon Cash, just a UK version. You can uh, exchange your cash for uh, Amazon gift cards. eBay is going to launch questions and answers on the UK site in October. Some will say a little bit more Amazon Amazonification of eBay. I still think it's a good thing. Social proofing is, is a good thing when it comes to e-commerce. Uh, shopping apps amongst the most elite on smartphones. We had a chat about that and why that shouldn't be a surprise and how eight, seven or eight years ago, a lot of businesses had to make that choice. Did they go app route or did they go mobile website route? And mobile website is the one which has prevailed in popularity. Um, Etsy has invited sellers to a forum Q&A to discuss new search filters. Um, we then have the Google Chrome browser security change prompts action by eBay. Like I said, massive hat tip to eBay for responding so quickly on that news. Um, Google obviously making some changes into their browser. eBay noticed straight away this could cause problems for them and have started communicating that very quickly with sellers. So hat tip to eBay. If you do get an email from eBay today or tomorrow, uh, that says that you found they found HTTP content in your listings, take action sooner rather than later. Uh, and like I said, the link to the tool which can help you identify those uh, pieces is in the article as well, which again, link is down below. We talked about urban area drone delivery is now a reality thanks to the pilot, which is currently going on in Reykjavik, Iceland, uh, along with Flytrek, which I believe is the Israeli uh, drone company. Interesting to see how that works. Like I said, there's been a lot of, you know, with the flight times and, and the load bearing of drones or the Amazon drones, how realistic is it to get drone delivery on a, on a much larger scale? This could potentially be the answer. Well, like I said, I'm sure there'll be lots of people watching that very carefully as, as the future of e-commerce grows. And finally, we talked about e-commerce show North coming to Manchester. The first ever inaugural event of e-commerce show North happens in Manchester. It's a two day event, 11th and 12th of October. If you are interested, if you can make it, the link to sign up is in the article underneath this video. So again, check that out. I will be there. Matt should be there. Uh, Richard will hopefully be there if the stars align with, uh, with flights, but obviously we can't, uh, we can't promise that, but I can tell you I will be there. So 
what more reason could you possibly want to uh, to turn up to? With that said, guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, today's Esau Cafe News Roundup. Uh, it's been an interesting week. We've had some uh, big news, like I said, coming from Amazon. There's a lot of food news this week. The Amazon groceries and Walmart getting involved and Uber doing deliveries. Uh, and this week could be set to be a very similar one once we find out more about the Amazon Whole, Food, Whole Foods deal and how that is going to get impacted and some of the... Uh, some of the changes which Amazon are going to apparently adapt very quickly into that marketplace. So again, one to keep our eye on. With that said, I would say it's time to thank you for watching this. If you're either watching it live right now, thank you so much. Or if you're watching the recorded version, if you ever have any questions, don't just don't be scared to leave them down below. One of the team will get back to you as soon as we can. Also, if you're watching this right now, do me a favor, hit that like button. It means a lot to myself, Matt and Richard. And with that said, I'll leave you to crack on with the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll catch you next week. Have a great week, everyone. And, uh, yeah, see you then.